Hello Instagram and the world. This is Jonathan Melendrez. I'm a professional ballroom dancer, wedding choreographer, and best of the not, three-time winner. Uh, today, uh, I want to introduce, uh, uh, <laughs> let me start that again. I want to remind everybody that Mondays and Fridays, we do this live stream at 12 o'clock. Mondays and Fridays at 12 o'clock. Uh, the stream is dedicated to wedding industry professionals, uh, their crafts and their services. Uh, but before we get into the, uh, the big show today, uh, I wanted to uh, have a couple of special announcements. Uh, Melendra's Dance Studios is open for private lessons in person and in virtual. So I just want to remind everybody that uh, group classes are open via virtual lessons and private lessons are also open for face-to-face -face and virtual lessons. Uh, so we just I just had a private lesson a little while ago. But on top of that, I want to let everybody know that we are starting new group classes Tuesday nights starting the 23rd. We're doing cha-cha class at 7 o'clock. So starting June 23rd, 2020 at 7 p.m., we're starting group classes. So it's only four weeks. It's a 30-minute lesson for four weeks, and we're going to be going over cha-cha, the Latin dance cha-cha, American-style cha-cha. Uh, we are working on basics, footwork, rhythm, timing, and a lot of great stuff. And it's always a lot of fun to have everybody there on Tuesday nights. So please join us. Okay? I want to bring in uh, my favorite person that I like to... Go on with Neuron from Angela Neuron Shoes. I call her Neuron. So let's see if, uh, let's bring her up here. Hey, Neuron. Hey, John. How are you doing? Happy Friday. Yeah, actually, I was going to tell you, happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Happy ah. Juneteenth. Do you know ah. what the definition of Juneteenth is? Uh, like everybody, I'm actually learning a lot more about the black history and, <laughs> and yeah, I, I did some reading up on it and, um, it's a really interesting day. Um, did you know about it before, uh, recent racial problems that have been cropping up? Well, you know, our, our fantastic, uh, uh, the president uh, made uh, made this whole uh, whole issue a deal yeah. by by doing this by planning his uh, thing on Juneteenth. Uh, it's an unofficial right. American holiday celebrated annually on the nineteenth of June in the United States to commemorate the Union Army General Gordon Granger's reading of the federal orders in the city of Galveston, Texas. Um, on 19th of June, 1865, proclaiming that all enslaved persons in the U.S. state of Texas are now free. Yeah. And I also read that although uh, President Lincoln had actually proclaimed the Emancipation Proclamation was actually two and a half years earlier than the 1865 um, Juneteenth uh, announcement, because a lot of people in Texas apparently did not want to free their slaves. So they, uh, I've read up on this too, they refused to acknowledge it. And it took two and a half years before this actually made it to Texas and the Texas slaves were actually freed. So, Isn't that yeah. incredible? Two and a half years. I, I just have the hardest time understanding how anybody could treat anybody differently because of the, the color of their skin, the orientation, or their race. I, I don't understand why why people can't just, people are people. We are the human species, you know? It blows my mind that people have a problem with other people because of the way that they look or who they love or what their sex or their orientation is. Anyway. Um, I know that this is supposed to be a, a happy, pleasant, uh, fun, um, informative discussion, but this is important, and I, I just wanted to, to wish everybody out there, black friends, white friends, green friends, it doesn't matter, people I know or I don't know, um, everybody deserves to be treated the same. 
this is supposed to be a free country. Uh, I, you know, uh, it's 2020. I can't believe that there's still racism, racism uh, still around. I thought we passed that, but we, you know, we're only what, a generation and a half past segregation and, um, uh, you know, it's bred, it's trained into young people. And as they grow up, they train it down to their next generation. So uh, I hope people, you know, are watching and listening and understanding that, you know, something like this is disgusting. You know, judging people on the way they look, you know, the color of their skin is, it's bogus. It's, uh, it's horrible. I mean, it's just so naive and ignorant that uh, people still do this. But I hope it does go away and I hope people get educated uh and we're all on we're on, the, we're on this planet together man you know yeah we got no time for racism we got no time for this there's so many things that we all need to be doing as as a human being and instead of trying to tear down somebody else we need to really uh lift the bar and try to improve ourselves and how we go about things and how we spread you know kindness and respectfulness uh, around the world i can't believe it's still around but you know, it's here and we got to deal with it. And I hope and I pray that uh, people smarten up and, and, and stop doing this uh, stupid behavior and thinking the stupid way. Yeah. But I got some real it'll, it'll be a big help when we have leadership that focuses on improving the situation. You know, so. uh, earlier in my dance career, when I used to work oh. with the franchise, <laughs> uh, I, there was a comment that I always remember that a, a, the fish stinks from the head to the tail. So uh, if something uh, is horribly wrong, it's because uh, at the very top, it's rotten. And then it just trickles down right into the tail. So, a f you know, a fish stinks from the head to the tail. So hopefully we get a new fish. <laughs> you know? I hear you. All right, what have you got today, Eve Lux? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, backed by popular demand, uh, this company is, uh, you know, they're internationally known. And in the wedding industry, uh, if you don't know who, the, who this company is, then you're way out of touch. Um, this is a high-end company, uh, luxury, uh, what's the word, bespoke, a couture, um, yes. a luxury. You know, those three words uh, bring up this company automatically. And I get a lot of comments to talk about this. Uh, what they have uh, is outstanding. It's sparkly for the, <laughs> for the brides or people, for the people who like sparkly stuff. You know, this is the, this is the Home Depot of sparkly stuff. Well, awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to hear yeah. more about it. Uh, I hope she, he I or have, she has some what, what, What's that? Gonna be, She's going to be displaying some of her, her beauties. You know, I told her, she goes, what should I do? I said, you know, whatever you want to do, it's going to be fantastic. And every time I brought her on, I brought her on in the past. You know, I wanted to get a conversation, but there's no conversation. What I'm going to do this time is just I'm going to say hello and let her take over the whole, the whole time. Okay. <laughs> so, that's my plan. Okay. Edge of our seats, bling us, baby. Bling us, bling us. Okay, you ready? Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you uh, Eden Lux Bridal of Palm Beach. E Miss Eden Lux Bridal herself. I really didn't mean to take over your conversation <laughs> last time. I'm just saying. You know, I'm going to learn from my mistakes and I'm just going to step aside. I'm going to say hello and just let you do what you do, because there's no way that I can compete with you. You know, you sparkly stuff and me just, a, I'm just another human being sparkly and you take, uh, take the rest of the time. So <laughs> whatever you want to do, Heather, it's all yours. Okay. Well, what would you like to talk about? Uh, let's start with uh, Eden Lex Bridal, how it started and uh, how it, uh, where it's going to go. Okay. So how Eden Lux Bridal started was after my own wedding was over way back when, um, I was really bummed out because the one thing that I loved was playing with all the sparkly stuff and getting to wear crowns and tiaras and beautiful, delicate, gorgeous things. And I decided that I wanted to continue that. So I started my own company and 
Also, this is a big social issue, but um, my student loans from nursing school were out of control. <laughs> and when you first start as a nurse, they don't pay you very much. So I was like, oh, crap. I need to do something else. <laughs> so it was kind of born out of both of those, um, those reasons. But um, eventually, Eden Lux became my main career. And then I um, just started doing nursing very, very part time. Right. So that's how it started. Oh, wow. And I've always had an obsession um, with crowns and tiaras and just you know, the whole royal princess thing. I'm a huge fan of the royal family. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it's insane how I know more about the English monarchy from way back to now. <laughs> and as an American, I mean, I'm just, I've watched so many shows on it. So I guess, you know, crowns. <laughs> so where is that? Where is Eden Lux going to? What's it? Is there an end all be all or is it uh well is it a I mean what's where it's, where's it's a journey life? and and because I love it, I don't want to have it go I don't know. Everything is a journey and we're growing, we're expanding our platinum line. I brought a couple of um pieces to show. Ooh, New platinum line. Platinum huh? line. Listen, yes. when I hear the word platinum, uh, you know, it's got to be amazing. It's got to be like over the top. It's something yeah. platinum. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's see. If... Okay. So this piece is, this is not from our platinum line. This is our Queen Victoria. So this is one of our hugely, hugely popular pieces. It's a bit taller. And a lot of clients had asked for, and this is crystal. So a lot of clients had asked for a simulated diamond version that was a tidge shorter. So here we go. And this, wait a minute, wait a minute. How how much is a tidge? Uh, a tidge. Tidge. Okay. Just okay. a tidge. So a tidge is whatever the height difference is between okay. this and this. <laughs> That's a tidge. Come on. They didn't Thank teach you. you tidges in school. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I stand corrected. It's I a step tidge. Aside. <laughs> so this is the platinum version one, which is all simulated diamonds. And it's a bit more delicate in the frame. It's and it's platinum plated. And the, the stones that we use in our CZ pieces, they're the top top line stones and the reason that we use them is so there's no color showing that they are clear and these these types of pieces cz pieces they are set just like jewelry um with prongs pave set it's it's done just like i don't know if you can see that but just like actual diamond jewelry yeah and the wow. work that goes into creating a tiara that's made with simulated diamonds in our platinum collection is astounding. Wow. Every single little stone has to be prong set. It, it takes forever. So, so, so each, each, each item is hand placed and mm -hmm. that's crazy. It, ha it has to be, there's, there's no way to make this just like yeah. there's no way to make a diamond ring. I mean, it's it's an, an art to to be able to set diamonds. There are people who just set diamonds in the world, diamond setters. And that it takes just as much skill. It's the same process to set the CZs. And there's so, so many of them. Huh? Is, is it manually set or is it yeah, like- by hand. So each, everything is made each, by hand there. Yes, each That's piece. Insane. Each piece. That's yeah. insane. Yep, every little stone. It's amazing. Hence the platinum collection. So, I mean, these are all made by hand as well. But when you are working with crystals, they're a lot easier to place because the way that they're set in a cup, 
Right. And they can be, it's easier to make because it's made with jeweler, jeweler's epoxy and then the, the crystals are placed in the cup by hand, but it's a lot easier of a process and takes less, a lot less time than making a piece like this. Wow. Still both beautiful, but right. it's just, you know, I mean, there's couture gowns that take way more time because of the detail and the work that goes into them and the, the hand sewing processes and you know, same thing goes for tiaras. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of tiaras are, are there all different types of tiaras or there's headbands? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's head pieces. Um, <clears throat> head pieces would go on I have one right here. So this is this particular piece. Hold on, I'm just straightening it up because I got a little smushed. So this piece is a tiara. It can be yes. worn like this. But this piece can also be, if you turn it around this way, you can right. wear it like this. Oh, look at that. So you actually inverted the, inverted the tiara. Mm-hmm, like Versus, a headpiece. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so, <crazy. laughs> so you could wear it as the tiara part, like boop, for your right. ceremony, and That's then crazy. flip it around for another look. No for way. Your reception. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, that's amazing. Yep. That's amazing. Now, I there's this new thing going around. Um, it's called the everyday tiara. Have you ever heard of something like that? Yes. I have decided that everyday tiaras should be a thing. I, you know, rumor has it that Eden Lux coined that phrase, uh, an everyday I tiara. I did. I Is did. it true? Yes. An everyday tiara. So what yes. does an everyday tiara mean? I mean, what's... Well, an everyday tiara, I'm going to grab an alternate everyday tiara because my, my everyday tiara that I made that matches my hair color is actually downstairs, so I can't go get that. Okay. But this one that I have over here also could be worn for an everyday is, tiara. Is that your is that this your, is oh. this is a second a secondary everyday tiara. So this is like it's faux leather blossoms with crystals in the center. Wow. So an everyday tiara, you have to be able to walk into a room and not give a crap. If anybody is looking at you like, wow, why is she wearing something on her head? Because I can. <laughs> and because I want to. Because I deserve to wear a crown. <laughs> because that's just the way it is. It's fun. It, it just elevates your mood. And it just makes you feel better. What um, I know you have, you have lots of uh, promotions and lots of ways to, to uh, what's better to look at your your website or um, your Instagram page? Well, I mean, a lot of clients find me through Instagram um, and we uh, participate in a lot of collaborations with other companies. So they kind of find us that way, but on the website, there's everything. And EdenLexBridal.com? Correct. And they can reach out to me through Insta, DM or through um, the contact um, page on the site or through chat. And I love styling my clients. So yeah. when I style clients, I really, I take it very seriously. Like, yeah. and a lot of clients wind up calling me their wedding fairy godmother <laughs> after <laughs> just because I mean, it's, it's stressful to be a bride. And yeah. um, I, I know that you, as a dude, don't quite get it because, no. No. you and know, you know you I'm not just, afraid to say that. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, because you're just like, just, I'll pick out my talks, just show me where I'm supposed to stand and I'll be there and tell I'm me. I'm the, the X time. chromosome. So, yeah. or am I they, the Y chromosome? I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's it's stressful as a bride because, you know, there's so many different looks, there's so many different options. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that sell tiaras online, um, on Etsy, everywhere. The They are not all created equal. And yes. 
Yes, there are. <clears throat> I've been in this this business since 2012, and I have researched every manufacturer and every company that makes tiaras. And there are lots of companies <clears throat> that make pretty tiaras, but the metal is thinner, the stones are cloudier, the right. settings are not perfect. Right. The stones, when they're set in the cups, they don't let the glue dry enough before they tilt it. So then it looks like like that in a, in like, a setting. I mean, it's just like that. <laughs> You you had brought up, you had brought up uh, that you style the brides, so yes, if, so if, yes, so I style the brides from head to toe, and how do you do I that? take that very seriously. Um, so when I work with a client, I have them send me a gown photo, and um, tell me about the vibe of their wedding because that's really important. Um, not just the dress. I need to know, or is the vibe of your wedding like Euro glam? Is it um, black tie? Is it like a romantic, soft, um, English breakfast kind of a feel? Like, where are you going for that? Like, let me see all of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the details of the dress. Um, I help them choose shoes. I don't have shoes, but I help them choose shoes if um, they haven't gotten them already because I want to make sure that, like, it's really important that a bride has a totally cohesive look from head to toe. The right. pictures, just like, just like, oh, yes, Angela, we have veils. I'm getting to that in a moment. Um, just like celebrities, they have stylists because they know that they're going to walk the red carpet. This is your red carpet moment as a bride. If you're not a Hollywood celebrity and you don't get to walk the red carpet, this is it, babe. Like you got to make it <laughs> perfect. Yeah. So, so the photos that are left over from this day will follow you for the rest of your life. That's and true. you want to look perfect as possible and completely styled cohesively so that starts with looking at the gown talking about the venue talking about what the bride's colors are for the wedding what they want um they want to feel on their big day do they want to feel like royalty do they want to feel more romantic and bohemian because we really do everything and because we also do custom pieces um, and bespoke work, we can make anything happen. So, yeah. I mean, for the most part, that's just, it, it's, I really want to get into the right. whole mindset of where that bride is. You know, so, I, I know, I know in a second here, we want to talk about veils, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, when I got married, uh, there was this one person who kept popping in my face that I didn't know who about, who, uh, she was, but what whoever she is, she's got some power because she wrote this book on certain things that uh, we need to do and certain rules that you need to follow. I think her name was Emily Post. <laughs> Never knew who she was until I got Yes, married. Emily Post. She is still relevant today. She is from years and years before. I think she started, and I'll have to look. Do I have the book? I have her book, but it's not handy, so I can't look up like when she started. She either started in the 1800s or in the 1900s, but she was the queen. Before Martha Stewart, there was Emily Post. Oh. And Emily Post was the etiquette, etiquette queen. So, you know, there are certain things that should be followed. Um, it's right. a lot more lax now right. because we're in a more modern society, but there are still traditions that, right. and niceties that need to be followed. Right, right. Yes, so Emily Post, to me, she matters. <laughs> well, good. Her book good. is now this big, like this big, because now it encompasses all that it encompassed before, but now we have like, digital stuff and all kinds of other new topics that didn't exist technology wise in her time. That's crazy. So it's like 
giant and I love it. All right, let's talk about your veils because- uh... Okay, all right. So veils are super important and a lot, oh. Oh, okay, thanks, Angela. So um, Emily Post was born in 1872 and died in 1960. Rest in peace, Emily Post. We love you. So, thank you. Guy, when, when guys get married or when they go to a special event, <laughs> they'll start to know who she is. Yes. And probably Absolutely. end up not liking her. <laughs> <laughs> because that's like one more person her. telling you what to do. <laughs> one more person telling me what to do. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to change my tiara just for a moment. I'm going to yes. put on another tiara because oh, I wonderful. Can. So, and then we're going to talk about veils. So this is the the Boucheron honeycomb tiara that, that Camilla amazing. Camilla wears. This, wow. which is Prince Charles' wife. So this is part of our platinum collection, and it's all. I mean, it's just it's spectacular. That's amazing. It's gorgeous. All that was hand 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 placed. set hand mm -hmm. set hand set each stone is hand set and this is platinum plated wow so and it it's a copy of how long her is that gonna last i mean tier. that looks like it's just For, been forever. forever forever i mean if you if you don't you know go throw it in the pool <laughs> you know and just how keep you, it after what? after the wedding what does the bride do with the crown or tiara that she wears during the wedding is there like uh after dress party something for tiaras or something well frankly you know? okay so now that you have this super fabulous high-end tiara why would you just want to wear a tiara once i mean really like you should wear your tiara now that it's come out at the wedding your birthday why can't you wear a big ass tiara out to dinner when we can go out to dinner again. But I mean, I've worn a full crown. It's a queen crown. Fancy restaurants. Just an amazing crown. Our Tanya crown. I have worn that out to dinner. People looked and I did not care <laughs> because I was like, it's my birthday. <laughs> so anyway, so you can wear your tiara again for your birthday. You can also wear it on New Year's Eve. I've worn real tiaras on New Year's Eve. Why would you want to wear a paper hat? Like why? With right. the glitter? No. Right. Go big. Go yeah. real. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so so that one is brand new also. And this was actually just listed on our site as part of the platinum collection. And then the last platinum collection, then we will get to talk about veils. So this is the Khadiv tiara, and this is a copy of the Khadiv oh. tiara. Wow, that look was at given, that. Yep, yeah, it belongs to um, crown, crown Princess Margaret of Connaught from Sweden. And wow. it was given to her by the Egypt Khadiv. Now, I know I'm a dude, but just saying that that's a beautiful tiara oh it, it's it's gorgeous this is another one from our platinum collection because it's all hand all hand set you know i mean details matter and people spend so much energy i i know i did like for my my own wedding details really matter and the work that goes into making bridal gowns like people always are kind of sticker shock when they go shopping for a wedding gown and then they have to do alterations. And the reason why is because it's not just like one side of a fabric sewn to another side of a fabric, stick a zipper in it and, and you know, make a hoodie thing. Like right. it's so involved. There's so many layers, so much. It's so precise and it's really couture level sewing. And there's a lot of hand sewing and the hours that it takes to make such a detailed and large garment and make it really fit it's yeah. it's an enormous amount of work and if you're using beautiful material right. that's really well made that's also really expensive and also that's another reason why our tiaras do tend to be pricey but that's because our pieces use the highest quality materials 
I personally can't stand things that look cheesy, crappy. Right. If it doesn't look like it just came out of a royal vault, it's not part of the collection. Like, so you're really paying no. for you're really paying for well, quality detail. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. And and plus, you know, you want to create something that's a that's an heirloom to right. hand down. You know, right. to whether it's to your own daughter or whether you're handing it down to you know, if you have a son to your daughter in law to be or, you know, somebody. I mean, it's it's just one of those things. And you asked, what else can a bride do with her tiara after? I actually have some clients who display them on their, right. like on their shelf. Right. They just prop them up, you know, like on a bookshelf with a, a light shining on it. I mean, the, it's beautiful. Like why stick it in a box and never look at it again? Like it's just what? so gorgeous. Uh, I know that Eden Lux is about quality and uh, detail, attention to detail. Oh yeah. What what would Eden Lux be known for? I mean, you guys do a lot of business uh, internationally, mm -hmm. uh, nationally, and internationally. You're 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 a global company. What would uh, what would Eden Lux be known for? Um. Well, aside from the attention to detail and the absolute just adherence to quality that we do bespoke work um a lot of a lot of brides want something specific where they want different color stones integrated they want purling done we hand make things um we also have just absolutely gorgeous veils as well um the veils i have okay so my own personal philosophy about veils and I was just, um, we were just featured in Wedding Sparrow on their blog, um, I think it was two days ago, about veils. And one of the things that I feel very strongly about veils is if it's not a cathedral veil or longer, and you're my client, I'm really not going to want you to wear anything else and it, it doesn't even have to come from me because a lot of brides get their veil at the same time at when they buy their dress and the lace is matching the exact lace on the gown fine but please don't wear short veils ladies because what happens with a short veil is it think about you're being seen from behind right you have all of these beautiful details on the back of your gown there's buttons there's lacing there's a beautiful open back and and it, the whole point of the dress is to accentuate your figure and just make it look so flowy and beautifully done and romantic and then you put a veil that cuts visually at the waist why why <laughs> It just or and it's got lace or it's, it's disturbing. It's visually disturbing. A veil should completely envelop the bride in like this beautiful cloud of ethereal, just ah, like completely frame them and and frame the gown. And then in the photos, it just looks classic and elegant and visually just cohesive and it flows beautifully. So personally i've only actually done of all of the veils that i have done for clients two ever that were short because i hate them oh. <laughs> so i can't so I stand them there's no promotional uh, items for short no veils, are there? <laughs> no 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 and don't even get me started on birdcage veils do you know what a birdcage veil is yeah okay so bird <laughs> birdcage veils <laughs> It's like it's hooked to a comb and then it's like this poof. It's from the 50s. Like, yeah, this poof of like Russian netting that's supposed to go across. That's a birdcage. That's not what I had in mind. Yeah. So unless you're Beyonce, like I have never seen a bride actually pull off like a really beautiful birdcage veil. Honestly, it, it yeah. sticks up funny. It just looks weird. I don't know. I just... I won't make them. I've had clients be like, please make me one. No, I'm not doing it. I don't like them. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, you've been running away. I, you know, this whole interview is not uh, structured in any way because I know when you, once you start talking about veils and sparkly stuff, we could go all day. But I do have a time limit that I try to keep within, okay? Okay. 
So I've got about five minutes. So uh, what what else do you want to talk about? I, I you you do a lot of uh, promotions. No, I take it back. I don't want to say promotion. I want to say you've been featured on a lot of uh, popular magazines. Can you give us an example of where you've been featured? Yeah, I mean, we've been in British Vogue. Um, we're on all the wedding and Southern Bride magazine, um, Weddings magazine. Just, I mean, there's a list. People magazine. You know, I mean, it's quite an honor to be in all of those, you know, publications and on... Um, you know, on the blogs and featured, you know, I don't definitely don't take any of that for granted at all. <laughs> and so, um, one, I, I, would, I would imagine that most women would love to have a job like you do, always yeah. being surrounded and, and with sparkly crowns and beauty and all of that. Uh, in your office, are you surrounded with um, sparkly stuff and tiaras and crowns? Would there you, are, it looks like a crown tiara fairy barfed in this office can we, can like thank see, god you can only see this plane because the floor because i've been shooting in here is covered with stuff on the floor would, would you I've show been... us what, what your floor no is? No. no i will not no mm -mm. draw the line there but i would like to say one thing because i know that you and angela started talking about um everything that's been going on and <clears throat> finally finally coming to light about racism and systemic racism and just how that people who are not black or brown <clears throat> haven't really experienced the impact on a daily basis of how it negatively affects their life and sucks their soul. And um, it's so important that we all look at the history and how we either play into it or help to get rid of it. Yeah. And one of the things that we have decided to do, um, because I don't know if you saw the, the post that I had done, which I cried my way through because I'm just, it just, it kills me. I don't, I don't understand why people just can't love each other and just get along. Like we're human beings. We all yeah. have the same needs and wants and like people's, people's cultures are different from all over the world. But part of being from a place of love is looking at other people's cultures and going, cool, awesome. Right. Let's learn about that. And yeah. you're awesome. You know, like let's lift each other up. I'm sick of people just beating each other down and, and taking from people it's just awful so we decided um that for the rest of june that every purchase that's made um that we're going to be donating ten dollars from every purchase to the naacp and i chose the naacp because they are the legal defense fund and they deal with civil rights and they are a well long established organization where when you donate the money, it really goes to helping make things better, more just and equal in this country. Right. So, and then moving forward, we're going to choose a different organization every month um, where we're going to donate a portion of proceeds to um, that will help to um, just erase and get rid of all of the, the, just hate and racism and just injustice that is still here that it just sickens me. It absolutely yeah. sickens me. Yeah. So um, if anybody has any, you know, comments or thoughts for um, July's organization, I mean, if I, I may continue with the NAACP, um, you know, I, I don't know. I just want to make sure that whatever organization that we choose to donate to, that it's really truly going for, um, for the highest good that it can. Right. And, you know, it, it just, it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And I can't stand it. And frankly, it is depressing. So, yeah. So I just wanted to mention that because this is the perfect day to talk about, about yeah. that. Yes. Juneteenth. Well, and, um, yeah.
So, but let's end on a, on a sparkly better note. So what yes. let's, yeah. So let me ask you a question. Well, well, wait a minute. So, That's a little too late for that now. I'm at the end why? of time now. Oh. Okay. All right. Go ahead. One question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when you do um, a dance with a couple, like like start structuring their first dance, what are the things that like really make a great first dance versus a really like first dance? Well, um, what makes a great first dance is give is giving your choreographer three months in advance. You got to give him plenty of time to work with you because I tell you, yeah. I get a lot of phone calls. Mm. As a choreographer, I get a lot of phone calls that say, hey, John, I'm getting married uh, next week. Can you give us a dance? I'm like, okay, I can whip something <laughs> up for you, but just know that okay. it's not fantastic. You know, especially so, if they're not a dancer background, right? I not, imagine. Yeah, if they're not dancers, wow. even if they were dancers, I would still stay. I would still say, come in three months in advance, because mm -hmm. you, you need that time so that your muscle coordination is smooth and it flows. Because the last thing mm -hmm. I would want one of my clients or my students to do is to go out there and dance and look like they've had lessons. I don't want them to look like they've had lessons. I want they should look like. They they are flowing. They're elegant. That they were born to dance, and that's what they should look like. And that's how I try to choreograph it so that they look and, and they look seamless and they flow and they look fantastic. So that's my job. So plan three months in ahead. Call a dance studio. Call Melendra's Dance Studios. We can do it virtual. Uh, virtual lessons. We can do private that's lessons. That's cool. We can do private lessons online. We are now doing private lessons face-to-face, -face, of course, mm -hmm. with CDC guidelines. And while I'm on the subject, uh, Tuesdays, starting June 23rd, we are having cha-cha class on Tuesday nights uh, with my brother. Uh, my brother and I are doing it, uh, doing group classes. Oh, your online. brother has a dance studio, too? My brother has a dance studio, royalpalacedance.com. Cool. That's I cool. do my group classes uh, with him on his website. So you go to his website, you'll see uh, you'll see my classes uh, Friday night six thirty at salsa, and Tuesday nights at seven o'clock it's cha cha. So I encourage everybody to go check it out. That it's a lot sounds of fun. like fun. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want virtual lessons, that's cool. We can do private lessons online, and we can do it in person. So when you're doing your lessons now, like how are you protecting, like how are you moving forward with in-person lessons? Like what's happening? Well, uh, what we do is uh, uh, we set a date, you know, mm -hmm. we have an introductory course. You come in, it's like a consultation. You come in, we set a time. When you come in, we ask you, there's a list, it's a <laughs> small list. Outside the, the list, I ask you to bring your own pen a face mask uh, and a shield. Some some places are offering a shield, you know, a face plastic shield uh -huh. and or a mask. I always ask to bring in a mask. Mm -hmm. My wife, who's an ER nurse, says mm -hmm. that the shield doesn't really do anything. But some people don't agree with science. With, without a mask. Without a mask. So yeah, ideally no, wear a face shield enough. with a mask. If you don't have a face yes. shield, then wear the mask. But in any case, right. always wear the mask. And so the mask needs to stay up over the nose. <laughs> yeah. Wear the mask over the nose, okay? It yeah, doesn't like go under the nose. All the way the over the nose. Because this yeah. doesn't protect against a respiratory no. virus. It doesn't. No. But thank and you for, bring, I, thank you for I, bringing I, that up. Yes, are you purelling everything? Like what's what's being done, you know, like between students, you know, just so people feel comfortable. Right. Well, we wipe down, we, we wipe down the table, the chairs, the door mm -hmm. handles. When they come in, there's a certain area that we occupy. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a table and chair, wipe it down. Uh, the floor is marked out so that we at least say six feet apart. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we do. And I don't, you know, I stand six feet apart and I, I shoot out instructions. I don't get in there and put my hands on them like I used to mm -hmm. before COVID. So during well, COVID, I mean, 
I imagine you can still demonstrate, you know, what it is that you need them to do, and then they do it anyway. Yeah. 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 So it works out. Uh, but I do ask them to bring in a, a copy, uh, pictures of the dress. I ask mm -hmm. them to bring in their dance shoes. I ask them to bring in their music and the floor plan. So, you know, we can better tailor made their dance to be more pleasing and more effective, emotionally effective to their, their, their guests that show up. I go for that. What do you the, mean by emotionally effective? You know, a lot of the parents, the grandparents, they love to see their their bride and their groom dance and they get so emotionally involved. I had this one wedding that the bride, I mean, the mother of the bride was in tears. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. So that's what I go for. I go for the heart wrenching <laughs> dance moves that really make everybody crying emotionally. Oh, and that's so sweet. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. I go for the heartstrings right away. That's, but, and that's how a wedding should be. Yeah, I guess they should. Yeah, they should be. I cry at everybody's time. wedding. I don't even have to know them. Wonderful. I just cry. Listen, I'm, so way, beautiful. I'm way over time. This is going to be <laughs> close to an hour. And, you know, my Instagram feed can only hold so much file <laughs> capacity, you know? So, okay. It's been great to have you on. You're it's on by popular awesome. demand. You know, Thank Eden you. Lex Bridal, that's the website to go. Thank you. I'm going to end this with a sparkly tiara. Yes. Because I can. Because you can. <laughs> it makes you look even more beautiful now. Aww, that tiara. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So signing off with EdenLexBridal.com and on Instagram. Please check out Heather. Beautiful woman, smart, and thank she you. knows how to design a bride for her wedding. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having up. me. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Wow, that's amazing. All those sparklies. I think I'm going to have to need sunglasses or a new, a new glasses for my eyes. Did you see all those sparkles? Oh! I... <laughs> that's a birdcage veil. This is a birdcage veil, yes. That's a birdcage veil. <laughs> Heather, I couldn't resist, sweetheart. <laughs> That's yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I well, I, 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 here's what she means about, you know, them sticking up. But the thing is, it depends on what the girl's wearing. If she's wearing a classic, like, 1930s size, she's on there, oh, my God, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with the with the certain, you know, with a certain uh, style dress, a little short, real full dresses like they wore back in the 40s, something like this would be really cute, you know? Well, you um, know what I suggest? You know what I suggest? Call Eden Lux, ask for Heather, and let her style you. <laughs> yeah. now here's That's what here, I would say. Here's a tiara, which she can laugh as much as she wants to. This was my tiara when I got married. Really? That's great. It's got a lot of sparkly. My treasure. You know, so... I think it's the quality of an Eden Lux, so I think I had my heart saying I drove almost three hours to go buy this tiara, so it mattered. I might be frozen. Well, I guess now would be a good time to end the uh, stream. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you for coming. I'm back. You're always a lot of fun to hang out with. I enjoy it very much. Thanks so much, John. You have a great weekend. Yes, we'll see you on Monday for our oh. next show. And happy Father's Day to any fathers that are Thank out you. watching. Thank you. That's this Sunday. I'm a proud poppy. Oh, awesome. Bring your babies on. All right, you go. Thanks for having, thanks for coming on. We'll see you soon. Okay, so uh, perfect time to stop our live stream while there's technical difficulties. So thank you, Naran. Uh, I want to mention again, EdenLuckBridal.com. What a beautiful uh, product she has. Crowns and tiaras and veils. Oh my, beautiful, beautiful. Great conversation with Heather. I enjoyed it very much. So I encourage everybody to check her out. And um, everyone, please stay safe and wear a mask and wash your hands. Have a good day.